Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Diablo 3. And since last time, I completed the Hell difficulty mode. And also last time, well, not really last time, I moved my Infernal Staff of Hurting that I had already created a long time ago into my inventory. And unfortunately, I still have this one that will disappear when this character disappears. As far as leveling goes, I've, as you see, managed to get to level 60 on my way through uh, hell there. I think it happened in the middle of Act 3, if I'm not mistaken. And I put on, I think, just a new weapon, and that was basically it. Er, well, I think I put on the String of Ears, too. And, yeah, my amulet. There we go. That's all my new gear. Everything else is pretty much the way it was last time you saw me. Um, other than that, yeah, so last time we were able to gather all the things that we needed to make the staff. Now, putting the staff to work. But before that, as you can... Yeah, stop talking. I've, uh, if you notice my quest here, I have no quests, but I've, uh, as you can see here, this is hell, and I've managed, I just set my quest here because I have an easy access of getting to the place I want to get to. Now, before we go back there, I'd like to, uh, uh, I can't sell that. What can I sell? Let's sell that. Okay, I just wanted to show this to you in case. I've got some. I worked my hands to the Would you stop that? Bring you these fine goods. If you happen to, oops, misclick and sell something, you can go to the buyback section, and you can buy back the item that you uh, accidentally sold to the merchant. Now, I don't think in a public game other people have access to it, but they may. Who knows? I don't I haven't seen anyone steal things that I've accidentally sold, so I'm pretty sure they give you uh sorry about that. Big cough there. Um uh, I've never seen anyone be able to buy back my item, so I'm assuming it's not there. Speaking of that, a lot of people when I see them in games, they will note that oh I gotta go back to town and sell my items. Now these are level 60 items. They sell for about two grand. Those ones there. Let's look at uh, some of my lower level items. You know, that's level 13 requirement. It sells for 300. That's even a legendary item in level 3, and it sells for under 300. 6, 4, 4, 5. Yeah, most of these items don't sell for very much. However, these do. So I highly, highly recommend that you salvage your useless items as opposed to selling them to merchants because you'll get more money, especially in Normal and Nightmare, for these. The ones in Hell, you might as well sell the items because the Hell um, crafting materials sell for pennies that are really useless. Those ones, the items are better to sell. However, once you get items that are level 60, and I'm looking at the item level, not the required level. Uh, that one's 56, so this one would be hell. This one here, as you can see, it's got reduced level requirement, which means it would probably have hell requirements on it as well. Let's see, that would be hell. I don't think I have anything else that's level 60. This, again, lower level requirement. And same with this. Let's see if we can find something that's actually level 60. Yeah. This would salvage for the Inferno level. And pretty much everything that's level 60 and over. So there's item levels. Um, level 60, 61, 62, and 63. Those will all salvage. God damn cough. Those will all salvage for um, the Inferno level level uh, crafting materials which you want even though they sell at approximately the same value as you know level 60 items would they're also useful for crafting and so you would much rather keep them around for crafting or sell them because they sell for pretty much the same price as that anyway and it's easier to hold as you can see up to 500 of each of these in a stack holding a bunch of these around all the time is a pain now, I haven't mentioned the Tome of Secrets. The Tome of Secrets is the most, the Inferno level upgrades to the Tome of Jewel Crafting and Blacksmithing. Basically, the idea is, is they get merged together here. Yeah, it's a Tome of Incredible Plower, blah, blah, blah. It's for artisans. 
And so you'll eventually, like you'll start off needing just money to upgrade your artisans. And then you'll need money and pages of blacksmithing or jewel crafting. Then money and tomes of blacksmithing or jewel crafting. Then finally, you'll need tome of secrets and money in order to upgrade them. Once you get them to level 10, they can do pretty much everything they want, except in the case of the blacksmith, where you need to get some books in order to fill out his remaining stuff. So, what else did I want to mention? Oh yes, this right here. This is your banner, and I guess you can customize this with a whole bunch of things. I looked at this for, I think, all of 10 minutes when I first started playing in the first difficulty, and I got bored with it. So it's there. If you press the G key, you can ping the map, the mini map there, to show people where you're going in a public game, and that just shows this exact little banner there. Now, I'm level 60, as you can see. However, if you Thank notice you. down here, Glorious order. We seek the sacred tomes okay, that I'll let them talk. by Archbishop Lazarus. Oh. What's in them? Not illustrations, perhaps? <laughs> no. They contain prophecies of the end times. Without them, we are lost. But they have been gone for 20 years, and you survive. And we will survive a thousand more if we must. But the tomes will return to us. Must be spectacularly naughty, then. <laughs> Your heresy is intolerable. And hilarious. The scoundrel is really, really funny when you listen to a lot of the things he says to either the Enchantress or the Templar. He really is just a little troublemaker to, you know, he's Dennis the Menace on steroids and as a more mature character, basically. And so, like I was saying here with the uh, level 60, we've gotten to level 60. However, there are levels beyond this. And at this point, me playing this game, you know, around Christmas time, it's, it makes no sense. We get up to level 60, and with the expansion coming out, we can get to level 70, and that's max level. However, we have Paragon levels that give us the exact same thing that our regular levels gave us. Think about that. It makes no sense. They might as well have just upped the actual level by 100 because you can get up to Paragon level 100. So technically, your max level is 160. I think I've gotten to Paragon level 50 with one character, and I am so bored of trying to level up my characters. The only way I could see doing any more is the same way I've seen most people get their characters up beyond about that much, and that's using a bot. And I don't want to do that. I don't think it's worth... Bleh, choke on something. I don't think it's worthwhile. It really doesn't make a lot of difference. However, I, w I got my experience bar you know, right up there so I can show you exactly what happens when we gain a Paragon level. Now, in order to uh, get what we want to get here... Just slaughter some... Uh, free item, why not? Old Tristram. Diablo himself once walked this place. Yes, he did. There is much to lament. I'm going to stop you guys from talking because you're interrupting me. Okay. Once you gain, you know, your staff, you must head over here. You take this waypoint, you head all the way back here, this and you'll an see most grave. this. It's in red right now. If we go over here by this corpse of a cow, we get... A new option. <clears throat> we see you have brought the item. That is good. We are utterly pleased. Cute spelling. You're a cow. Cows don't talk. Unless... Has my disintegrate spell been working on my wits instead of my enemies? And you are a stinking bag of flesh with no fur. <laughs> Touche. But <laughs> this is no time to be silly. The level of sparkling happiness and rainbows awaits you. You mean the cow level? No! There is no cow level. No. Ma! Uh, excuse me. Move along. And yes, they were basically making fun of the fact that, and as you notice there, that becomes all sparkly now. 
rainbow colored and all that jazz. And it goes to Whimsy Shire. Now, there was a cow level in Diablo 2, and there was reference to a cow level in StarCraft. Uh, one of the cheat codes uh, said there is no cow level. And yes, this is the much talked about pony level. Now, here we fight boring enemies that have stupid names and there's probably a reference to the fact that bronies exist. Now, I don't understand this. Uh, I think I've mentioned before that I first heard about bronies on another Let's Player's videos and I was like, what the hell is that? And so I googled it. I googled what a brony was. And while doing this, I found out that it was someone who grew up, presumably a male, grew up and wanted to rewatch the My Little Pony show. And then it hit me. There was a My Little Pony show? I thought it was a kid's toy. I had no idea that this was here. Like, I... I had no idea about this show. Didn't know it was a show, you didn't know it existed. Let us cleanse it from it this just... Land. It was weird beyond weird, you know, seeing that people wanted that to go back and watch oh. a show I didn't yes. even know existed. I think it is probably not for me. Now you talk to the clouds, you get some items, you blow up the mushrooms, you get some items and some gold. It's a, re it's a reasonable size area. It's not super huge. It's not super small. It's got a reasonable amount of uh, well special guys. And we reach Paragon level 1. Now, the thing with Paragon level 1s, as you see here, you gain 3% Magic Find and Gold Find. Did I get a portrait? Eh, go figure. Um, yes, so we do that, and where did I want to go for that? Oh, yeah. No, wrong key. And so what that does... Let's find my gold find and my magic find here. It gives you a base 3% to each of these. So by the time you hit level 100 in Paragon levels, you'll get, you know, 300 magic find. We also get pots of gold. I guess you're supposed to click on them, not attack them. Everything else you're supposed to attack. And the presence you attack, just like everything else. And you get stuff from them. It's not particularly interesting. Apparently, before I started playing, this used to be a really good area to farm items and experience and all that stuff. However, now apparently they've uh, nerfed it quite a bit. And yeah, the, uh, the health globes are these little cupcakes. I think that's what they are. I don't know. But yeah, so that's pretty much all this area is. is it's a little comical area where they can you know say that oh we put cows in there but we didn't put the cow level everybody wanted in there which is basically what happened you know everybody wanted the cow level back because in Diablo 2 it was the best area to farm in the game and it was relatively easy to get to and it was in terms of experience it was one of the best areas to you know grind in the game and it also had a lot of enemies in it, which was very helpful. Now, the amount of enemies in here, in Whimsyshire, it's not quite that high, but it's definitely reasonable. Now, I'm just going to kind of clear out this area, because why the hell not? It's pretty much I wanted to show you guys what this area was, and that's what I'm going to do. There's nothing special, there's no storyline, there's no special characters, as far as I know. There are a lot of little tiny bits to this game that I don't know about, and honestly, I don't really care about knowing about, you know. I've played this game long enough. I, I know enough about this game to get by, to play, to enjoy the game for what it is. But at this point, I've kind of gotten a little bored with it, you know. I was able to make a Let's Play series that I thought was at least somewhat entertaining and at least somewhat interesting to kind of teach some of the newer players how this game worked, or at least it, how it worked in my eyes. 
And yeah, that was kind of my last little ditch effort to renew my interest in the game. It just, now there are so many other games that I'd much rather play than this. I even uh, attempted to play uh, Path of Exile for a little while, though that uh, didn't last very long either. Not a big fan of the overly, the super overly customizable type of uh, game. Uh, it's, you know... When I looked I'm at Path of Exile, up. and you look at your skill tree, it looks like the bloody sphere grid from Final Fantasy X. On steroids. It's basically the sphere grid with, you know, quadruple to, you know, ten times the amount of nodes. And it's, to me, it just seems a little overwhelming, especially when you show this to the player at the start of the game. At least when, uh, well, let's kill you. At least in Final Fantasy X International, and from what I've heard, it's also going to be released in the, um, whoa, these are arcane sentries or whatever. They, uh, any enemy that is arcane enhanced will have them, and they hurt quite a bit, so I, I would avoid them. But, um, you know, when Tentu's International version was released, they had a new version of the Sphere Grid. And with this new version, they added more nodes. But at least they didn't give us that version right at the start. Not that there's that many more nodes, but there was more customizability with the uh, Sphere Grid and a bunch of other things, most of which I don't know particularly well because I never played the international I'm version. Just warming up. Which is one of the reasons why I'm interested in the, uh, the PS3 re-release. Yes, it's on Vita as well, but why would I play it on Vita? We have survived. Oh, Pinata. I think that's like only the third one I've seen. It's basically a resplendent chest. I almost never see those. Probably done this level. I don't know. Eight, eight times or so. Eight, nine times. And I've only seen one of those once. So <laughs> let's see. Yeah. Even on the map, it's all weird and multicolored and rainbowy. Healed. Okay, I don't know. Yeah, so pretty much that's all there is uh, to this. Uh, there's one other thing I want to mention. And let's just get a spot here. This down here, this is called Nephilim Valor. And if you delete, as you can read there, defeating elite packs or, you know packs of uh, champions or something like that, or completing an event, or getting a resplendent chest like the pinata that I just got, will increase your magic find, your gold find, and your experience. And this effect will last 30 minutes from the base time when you just kill them. Now, if we scroll down here, the amount of ex boosted to experience I have is 30 in here, 35 in there, and 31 with the gem in there, which for a total of 96, yes. And my bonus experience here has a 1.75 times multiplier. So that phone has been ringing all day. It's the same number too. I have no idea who it is and they won't leave a message. Okay, sorry about that. Um, where was I? I was on Gold Find, Magic Find, and yeah, with the Nephilim Valor. So yeah, you gain a reasonable amount of, of a boost to your experience as well. If you look at your experience, 1.75. Magic Find is raised, Gold Find is raised. If you notice the numbers from earlier on in the video, I think I had 48 Gold Find at that time. Yeah, either way, it's a very useful boost and it becomes to the point now once this is active and once you have five stacks if you notice that little number there you can get up to five stacks once you get five stacks if you kill an elite pack or you or champions or you kill a or open a resplendent chest you will always get rare items now i think that can be replaced with a legendary item but pretty much every time i've opened it i've gotten items like that and you usually get two or three of them even, so it's definitely a useful thing, and it's very beneficial to have. Go away. So I tend to do that before doing anything, and additionally, it's, you have to have five stacks before you can get... Really? 
before you can get the the proper key drops from the key wardens, which will be the result or the focus of the next video. So anyway, that's all for this one, and I'll see you guys. Yeah, that's all it is. I'll see you guys. I miss a spot. Ah, close enough. I'll see you guys next time.